What's up? It is that Kusk, and today I'm gonna make an ASMR video for you dudes. I haven't made an ASMR video in a while, and I think I'll only do this when I run out of ideas. <laughs> like, I just, I want to talk about Enneagram, but I don't really know where to start, and I kind of don't feel confident enough to do so yet, so <laughs> that's what's up with that. Because I would like to talk about instinctual, the instinctual variants, and um, I don't know, I find that to be the most interesting part. Maybe because I get roasted, so, um, sometimes you need a good roast. I'm not really into roasting or roasts, but sometimes I want to just be dragged into the mud, so, you know, I think, I think a balance has to be achieved there. But, um, yeah. Basically, uh, yeah, ASMR man. <laughs> Um, I guess I want to talk about motivation, since I haven't had much of it lately. Um, like, ever since 2018, I just, I just felt a bit hopeless, and just I couldn't connect to anything, or anyone. And, um, basically, like, I just wanted to sleep all day, basically. Like, I just, just really felt like I was in some sort of void, and, um... You know what happens to the best of us. So, um, I was just like, how do I get out of this? And I'm trying to get out of it now, like, I'm talking to more people and, um, trying to, you know, get out there, uh, the best as I can, as I possibly could, um, because, you know, sometimes this isn't, like, the most easiest thing to deal with, and it happens, so, uh, I, I do get that, um. But yeah, I don't really know how to exactly gain that motivation, it's just kind of something that I've been feeling, and it's something I've talked about recently, so, yeah. Other than that, I am getting better, and I'm talking to people, so, <laughs> that's kind of helping. I think the one thing, uh, for me is that I just forgot to talk to people, so <laughs> I'm just like, okay, I, I should actually communicate with others, maybe that could help a little bit, and it kind of did. And obviously it was the winter, so I couldn't really go out in the woods or anything, and usually nature kind of calms me down, so I couldn't really be out in nature and just chill. And sometimes we do need that, so, um, yeah, it just, it happens. Um, other than that, though, um, yeah, it's about I don't really know where else to go from here. I guess, like, I don't, you know, if someone else is dealing with the same thing, like, they probably have to try something else other than just talking to people and going out a little bit more. You know, they, like, force themselves to do things. Like, sometimes people just need to get back to what they, um, you know, were passionate about in the first place. But when I did that, I just couldn't really click. And I guess I can't really you know, move along with, um, doing daily tasks. You know, I just needed to, I guess, socialize and just get out there. So, yeah, that's about it. I think I just need to be around more people since I kind of just locked myself away for a good few months. <laughs> so I'm just trying to get back there. And, um, sometimes people need that. Uh, other people don't. I, I have oxy, so I kind of have to... <laughs> Um, talk to people and I kind of do forget at times. So that is something. Um, so, yeah, that's about it on that. I'm not sure what would work for anyone. Well, for everyone, because some people need to reconnect. Some people can't seem to reconnect. Other people just need to <laughs> try to get out there more, other people need to withdraw more, and that's just how things go, like, all of us are different, so that is something new to take into consideration, and yeah, I don't know what else to add, um, other than that, I was wearing my beanie earlier. So, um, yeah, it's an old one, though. Um, I got this, like, a few years ago. From the fan store. <laughs> yeah, I was at the fan store, and I got it. Um, basically, uh, it was 
I don't know. If it was. It probably wasn't on sale. I just got it. It's, it's, you can tell it's old. <laughs> but um, I got it with a coat, I think, or something, or shoes. I don't remember. I went on like a whole entire like van spree though, and I was at the store and got it. I'm not sponsored, by the way. I just want to make that clear. I'm not sponsored, obviously, but yeah. Um, and I also have pins on here because it's just so old. I don't care anymore. Uh, if you can't see, there's Totoro. Uh, how do make or how to make a bruise do that? I don't know, but this is a Totoro pin. This is um, the Game Boy pin I showed in my last ASMR video. Um, so yeah, they they're on my hat uh, that I sometimes wear. So that's a thing. Um, I don't know. I've just been going through some deep motivation. All that fun jazz thing. I haven't been I haven't been listening to music either, so that's also another thing. Sometimes music helps a lot. Um, to get to your I guess emotional side so to say. Um, and uh, let's see. Lately I've been listening to The Garden. I've been listening to Lodge of Rosenstock. Um, I got post on vinyl. And that's a good uh, USA just, get, it gets me pumped up, we're tired, we're bored, just, I think it's we're tired and bored, but you get, you get the point, that song fires me up, you know, it just progressively gets aggressive, and it's just, it's great, <laughs> it's not like Worry though, Post, um, Worry has a lot of shorter songs, and I think there's like more than ten, and like Post, like, just go slightly goes over 10 like it's an actual album like it's 12 songs I think I think worry goes over 12 songs though obviously both of them are more than 10 songs but like it's, it's interesting because like worry had a lot of shorter songs and post has more longer songs like I said the opening track is USA and that is about seven minutes and I think the last song on post is 10 minutes so I think that says a lot of, I just find that diversity pretty interesting um, today listening to King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard that was that was a trip <laughs> um, I recently got an album of theirs on vinyl um, one of the cheaper ones and um, it was interesting uh, I need to be in the mood to listen to it though uh, I got Mew on vinyl uh, Mew visual vi oh, visuals by Mew I actually like that album. I like uh, that song, Candy Pieces, like Shattered on the Floor. I don't know the song name. I'm really bad at names. I see the like in every video, but I'm really bad at names. Something like that though. Um, so yeah, it was pretty interesting. And obviously I spun my Against Me vinyl recently. Not not um, Shapeshift with me, but uh, transgender dysphoria blues because of that, um, uh, that, uh, dream. Like, you know, I wanted to get something more recent because, you know, if I got their more older stuff, that would cost a lot. So I'm like, I'm just gonna go down the line. I have shapeshift with me. So I'm just going to buy the next, the album before it. So that's what I did. And that album was mostly just because of that dream. It was just supposed to be some sort of reminder to keep on going. So that's kind of a weird reminder, I know. <laughs> it's kind of re a really weird symbolism, but, you know, it's something. Uh, let's see what else. Mm -mm. Uh, there is some. Um, what else have I, been, have I been listening to? I'm trying to think. I got I recently got into Bad Omens again. Uh, they're pretty interesting. I love their title track album. It's so good. Um, it's, it just gets me hyped. Uh, some of the songs do. Some of them are like really slow. Not really slow, but some of them are slower. And just that whole entire album's big mood. Um, Bad Omens self-titled. Like you have to check it out if you haven't. 
Um, I've been getting into Dayseeker because I heard like their 2016 stuff, and now that they're on Warp Tour, like I'm, I, I decided to look into them again, and they did release an album in 2017, and it is pretty fire. So I'm like, yeah, I can't get down to this. Um, so I want to see them on Warped. I also want to see the main. Lovely Little Lonely is obviously a good album. Um, water Parks, maybe. Uh, I love Entertainment. I also have that on vinyl. Um, I like Entertainment more than uh, Double Dare. I don't know, I think they just really hyped up their ironicness with Entertainment. Just, it sounds really good. Like, I'm not really a big fan of To the Moon and Back. Or Take You to the Moon or back and Back. I forgot the name song that song that they had on Double Dare, but I just really was not into it. And I think that makes me like entertainment more because a song like that isn't on there. Like, I guess the closest thing is Tantrum, but I love Tantrum. And I don't know, Tantrum's big mood. Um, also Peach Lobotomy's big mood. Um, <laughs> Alright, so the recording stops. But um, I guess other albums... That I've been listening to. I got a Summoner's EP when I got the Mew vinyl. Um, what else? <laughs> I I, I, got, I have a copy of The Suburbs now, which is really shocking. It is one of my favorite albums because I'm pretentious. No, but seriously, I don't know. That album is big mood. Like when I was 12 and first heard uh, the title track, The Suburbs, I was just like, this is big mood, like, I'm moving past the feeling, like, I relate to this, <laughs> and it's just, like, I was like, dude, I'm, I'm, like, totally doing that, um, but, yeah, it's just, I don't know, when I was younger, I just thought it was so deep, but now, when I'm older, I know, like, what all these songs are about, like, it's just, like, it's, like, the, one of the most fake deep albums ever to exist, but it's solid. Like, it has really good instrumentals, so I can't really complain. And I really like the bonus tracks since I do have um, the deluxe edition on CD, and I got that when I was 14 because I just really liked the album. So I did get the deluxe edition, which has um, the short film and everything. Um, it's a very atmospheric album, so I think that's why I appreciate it a lot. Like, I love the aesthetics. And, uh, it's about it. You know, it's the, I guess, war turned suburbs and just the, uh, we're getting our girlfriend pregnant when they're like 17, when she's like 17, you know? Like, and I have to work at Burger King now. Just, I don't know. I just find that aesthetic like so interesting. And when I was told, I just thought it was the deepest thing I ever heard in my life. But it's just... Like, it holds up today as just an album that has a really good atmosphere because of just how the instrumentals were put. And I think that's why I still appreciate it to this day and why it's still one of my favorites because I think there's just, like, a lot of effort that was put into it. Um, but it's, like, n not deep at all. It's just basically, like, we had to make an album, so we made this. And I guess that just turned Arcade Fire into something pretty pretentious, but it's just, like, whatever. I... I can see some sort of art in the suburbs at least, and even though it's like not that deep, it's just something that just takes you into another world of just everything falling apart and everything's changing for the worse. And it's just like, I guess it's very S-I-N-E in a way. Like, that's how I could explain it, you know? Doom and gloom. <laughs> you know, just like everything is falling apart. And it just takes you into like some sort of dystopian. I just I just really like that, I guess. You know, all my old friends, they don't know me now, you know? Um, <laughs> I don't know. It just, there's always a song off that album that I could just relate to in each part of my life. Um, you know, when I was 12 to like, <laughs> let's see, 16, it was the title track the suburbs because I just felt like I was just floating <laughs> throughout existence not really finding anything but I did find some things when I was like 15 like astrology and just kind of really found my place there and just said oh I really like this and it really does help me understand things um so I guess that's like kind of when the suburbs was kind of like 
waning as like a song that I kind of related to. Um, then, uh, you know, Suburban War was something I really started to relate to at that time, but it didn't really kick into full effect until I was like 17. And I wasn't near the same people that I used to be, so I was like, all my old friends, they don't know me now, and I just, it just kind of, like, everything just kind of felt a little weird, I guess. Like, everything was kind of changing, you know, growing pains and stuff like that, so to say. Coming of age, <laughs> you know, and, um, you know, I just felt like everything was just drifting apart that I knew. Um, and I was entering to a new age of my life, and I just really feel like Suburban War just encapsulates that vibe. Uh, <laughs> And like I said, all my old friends, they don't know me now. Like, obviously, like, I hang around with different people more now. So it's just, I just really kind of saw that. And I kind of went through a major loner phase. And it just really struck with me. You know, I wasn't talking to as many people as I used to. And just all that stuff happened. And just life and, uh, you know what I mean. Um, loner phase by Cold War Kids, though. That has to be my, um, my actual theme song. Because, um, I don't know if I talked about Anagram in this take, but I did want to make a video about it, but I don't feel confident. And I don't know if I said that right, but, um, Loner Phase by Cold War Kids. That is such a three-wing two song, mixed with, like, maybe three-wing four. Four-wing three. I could be wrong. Um, I'm a two-wing three, though, and I just, I really relate to it. Um... <laughs> Like, it just kind of reminds me of when I was 16. Like, I just felt like a smart ass. Like, not gonna lie. And then, um, you know, that song uh, came out and just... Well, that song did not come out when I was 16. It came out when I was, like, 14, but I just really related to it. <laughs> just like then. <laughs> because I just felt like, again, everything was falling apart and I just wasn't as smart as I thought I was. And I guess I wasn't, like... I guess kick ass as I thought it was, you know. I guess they, I guess like I, I got the ego notch that I deserved, but you get my point. Um, you know that song is about a relationship, though. Um, I don't really know if I wanted to have someone back. I think I probably did at that time. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna get into that though, because of people. Um. I don't know if someone's watching this and they'll be like, oh, I know who you're talking about, so I kind of just don't want to, um, I guess, uh, creep someone out or invade their privacy in any way. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, but, yeah, I think there was probably someone. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I wasn't, I'm not really good at relationships. <laughs> so that kind of, um, I guess that kind of spoke to me too, but other than that, I, I think, um, at that time, I just think that, you know, it was better off that I didn't date. And I do think that at the moment, but I don't know. Like, Jupiter is my seventh house, so I'm like, you know, I, pro I probably am going to meet someone. And it's just going to be like, okay. <laughs> hope they can stand me, and I hope I can better myself. So, that, that's something. <laughs> well, that got Hobo Johnson real quick. Um, but yeah, loner phase. Uh a good song in my opinion just it's my theme song other than the suburbs the suburbs and suburban war are also theme songs in my opinion uh let them in maybe by paris could be a theme song for me um i don't know what else i forgive no one by citizen it's also a good one my life is a mess and so is the song by joyce manor uh I don't really relate to this song, but I really love Aqua Sun by Basement. <laughs> uh, not the new version, but the old version. You know, when they ha were on Run for Cover. Is that what it's called? Run for Cover? Run to Cover? I'm bad with names. You know, uh, or the record label. Uh, that has a similar name to those two things. <laughs> and that Basement was on. While they released their first uh, version of Promise Everything. Um, you know, Aqua Sun, that, that song sticks with me, you know. I will swim halfway, you know, I, I try to do that. I am seen as a mediator at times. Um, 
So, yeah, that's something. Let's see what else. I don't know what else would be a theme song. <laughs> Other than those. I wouldn't necessarily say Genghis Khan, but like, I, I used to listen to that song a lot. Um, I don't know. I, I have a Scorpio on my descendants. So, um, that kind of says a lot. I'm probably more clingy than I say I am. But I, I, I like need a lot of space. So, I, I guess it kind of balances out. Um, I'm trying to think of other theme songs, <laughs> so to say. Uh, I like a lot. No Destination by the Garden. That's a theme song for me, definitely. I just, I just vibe with it. <laughs> I already gave a review on it, but it, it is something I hold dear to me. Like a, a song that I hold dear to me for sure. I think that's about it. Um, I think I should stop this video because it's getting kind of long. So, um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys later, I guess. Um, peace out. Fuck a tree. <laughs>